Looks like a, a ear of corn for a robot. Hello people on the internet. It's another day, it's another potato. Today I'm going to be trying to get the TT to make good power and run reliably. If you're new and you'd like to get caught up on why potatoes make delicious snacks, up above is a link to my pocket full of them. Up above is a link to the very first video where I picked up this TT in Salt Lake City, Utah, sight unseen, and drove it back to Tucson. The gentleman who is tuning the TT is going to remote in. If you guys saw the last video, having some trouble trying to get this thing to make and hold peak boost. Although, I did discover at the end of the day, it runs absolutely fine on wastegate pressure alone. Let's get this bad chicken plugged in. Cool, he's in, again. So this time around, he's going to load some software onto the computer for me to do some real-time data logging for him so we can see exactly what's going on when it's overboosting. Your computer is being controlled by Cloud Administrator. That's a really scary name. So I installed this program called ME7 Logger, and that's because this has an ME7 ECU, which is a highly capable factory ECU. Side note. I'll show you this now because I can't do it while I'm driving. You basically hit start ME7 Logger right there, and it's going to start data logging. And then it then saves that file for me to upload and send to the tuner. So it's uh, pretty basic data logging for those of you who already know how to do this stuff. But in case you didn't know, now you know. Are you injured? It's a little bumblebee. He's just walking though. I think he's injured. Are you okay? Are you okay, buddy? There you go. What is wrong with you? I'm gonna try to put it on a plant. No, don't fall. There you go. All right, now that I did my good deed saving nature today, I'll try to see what's going on with this map. Engine speed, RPM, okay. You can see right here, here's my engine speed. It starts right around 4,200 RPM. It cuts at like 4,200 RPM. You can feel it like kind of cutting a little bit. And then it kind of gradually breaks through around 5,000, 5,500. And like I said, it was smoothing back out again right here. 5300 RPM and you can see there's all kinds of data populated. That's really weird. Cylinder 2 and cylinder 4. It's pulling 10 degrees timing on one and 7 degrees timing on the other. Uh, no, if you scroll down even further right here, so that was first gear I was looking at. This is a second gear pull. It is pulling it across all four cylinders. So that was just because it was first gear. So yeah, it's pulling timing between 4200 RPM and about 5500 RPM. The tuner is logged back in right now. The deal was it was a math calculation that was incorrect and it was actually boosting to 25, 26 PSI and it was getting boost cut because of that. So he's fixing that right now. But another issue he's saying is that I'm having uh, fuel starvation up high, which I may end up having to upgrade the fuel pump or the injectors on here and go back down to a three bar fuel pressure regulator which kind of super sucks because I only have like less than two weeks left this giveaway, which means I won't be able to film a car view on the car before it's gone. I'll literally end up just fixing it and then it's gonna leave. And that's like super depressing. I think that's the hard part about doing a giveaway on a car I've had for over three years now. Like I'm attached to this thing, so I wanna give it a proper send off. So I don't know. That kind of really sucks. I'm really sad about that. I gotta take care of that washer squirter. It's driving me insane. I gotta check the sensor and see if it's plugged in to the reservoir. Here it goes. Round two. It looks like the little gnats flying around. No see them. Second gear pull. Does it? Still doing it. Since this car sat for like 
two years basically before I ended up doing all this stuff to it. I'm gonna change the fuel filter because it had old nasty gas in it. Are you at a 10? It should be. Yeah. I also ordered an AEM 340 liter per hour fuel pump for this thing. It won't be here till Wednesday though. This is the original fuel pump that's on the car. So that hopefully will take care of the rest of the issues since the tune looks to be good to go now. And uh, I don't know what I was gonna say. Of course it's these. Ugh. That's such a weird clip design that they have on these Audis. It looks like a sand dollar that will break your teeth. I don't think a regular sand dollar should be eaten either though. Oh, last one. It's just a bunch of moon biscuits and some, that looks like mouse shit. Moon biscuits and some spider webs. And there is the fuel filter. Never been changed since I own this thing. I forgot to purge the pressure off the system. Luckily, I have an easy way to purge all the fuel out of the system right here. How convenient is this? It's gonna spray a little bit. Oh, not really. That's nice. Pressure relieved. Put safety glasses on to protect my eyes. Now I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, that's lovely. Push the button. Somebody got that. Oh, more pee. Robot piss. Oh wow, good job. Don't hold back. Boo doo boo doo boo 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 boo. My finger is on the button. Oh geez. Oh more. There's more of it. Please stop peeing. Oh, you're gonna pee out the other end now. Great. Fucking delicious. Oh, that is so terrible looking. That's the gasoline that came out of that fuel filter. That's disgusting. That's insane. I mean, that had to have something to do with this thing not getting enough fuel up top. I already ordered the fuel pump for it, but geez. I got a new fuel filter. It looks like a, a ear of corn for a robot. Take a bite. Your teeth will look like you just smoked meth for about 20 years. Hanjo and Pullen. Oh. Fresh new clamp. Just from changing that fuel filter and firing it up, it has significantly more fuel pressure just at start and idle than it did before. I don't believe that was enough to make a difference, but the fuel filter was nasty. Wow, that was almost completely better. Definitely gonna do the fuel pump while I'm at it. Guten Morgen. So next day, I was really hoping that I would have the fuel pump here in time for this video, but unfortunately it didn't come. So instead, you guys get to watch me suffer. I'm gonna troubleshoot something that I've been putting off because it's not gonna be easy. That door right there, it's unlocked. Or at least the other door is unlocked. Doesn't matter what I do, I can't open it. I can at least put the window down still. Shh, 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 shh. Shut up and let me plug this into your belly button car. In order for me to fix this, I need to desafe the door. I was messing around in VCDS. This door used to open. Select control module. Central locks, 35. Output tests. Horn works. That's pretty cool. 
Activation of safety deadbolt and locks. I think that's what's stuck. Oh, no, no, no. This has to be the most annoying problem I've ever had to deal with on a car in my entire life. This is ridiculous. This is damn near impossible to try to capture on camera, but there's like two sections inside this door panel. There's like a section here where your glass is at, and then there's another door skin, and there's no rods, there's no nothing, there's no linkage at all whatsoever for the door. I don't know why I'm expecting this to be like an early 2000s Honda, where I could open this with like a popsicle stick and a piece of cheese. I guess I'm gonna take this door apart first before I try to take the other side apart. This photo alone is a good representation of this entire car's engineering in its entirety. That's how you take the door panel off. They couldn't just put a screw. No, there's, you have to solve something that Indiana Jones would have to figure out. I mean, it's cool and all that this thing is made out of metal and it's not some cheap plastic, but dude, this car exists purely because an engineer somewhere had to flex. That's the only reason why this car was ever built. That's it. One big bolt in the center of the door. That is the whole piece that holds it all together in theory. That's what the book says at least. So now I gotta lift the door panel up four inches while pulling out. Yeah, you gotta be kidding me. Is that's it? Just one, one bolt. That's it. All right, all right, all right. I have to figure out why this is not doing its job. Because like, watch, I'll open the door handle. I don't see anything happening. Let me pull a cable for the inside. You can see something up here moving a little, but. Okay, hell's a, I don't know, put deodorant marks all over the seat. That guy right there is the door handle. There should be a cable on the back side of that, or I can just undo the door handle, perhaps. Do as you're told, door. How can I get that top panel off? There's gotta be a way. Look, I got a new buddy. It's a little kangaroo mouse. He's sleepy. He just gave him a chip because he looked hungry. He was just hopping around in the shop underneath the car. I don't want him chewing on wires, so. So tiny, it's like a, it's a little M&M with legs. He was just drinking some of the water and washing his face with it. Now I give him some little baby carrots. It's a baby carrot, but it's literally bigger than his whole body. That carrot's like the size of a sliver. It's time for you to go back to the wilderness. I'll leave this little box here for you. In case you want to come back get some water and get some carrot. You're free to go. You don't want to go, you just want to keep eating carrots. You gotta go back to the wild. Just in case he comes back, I'm leaving his box with some water and carrots in there for him. And I cut a door and it's got a lid so it's safe. Hi. I just flew in from Los Angeles. I was there at uh, Porsche Driving Experience Center. Should be a video coming for you guys on probably my other channel um, here in the next week or so. But as far as the TT goes, Charlie worked on this thing all day, went to the junkyard and got two new door lock actuator mechanisms off the junkyard car. And look at that. However, with the help of one of you, Dave, one of my patrons, he remoted in on VCDS on this thing and did some further diagnostics because it was still throwing codes even after replacing both door lock actuator mechanisms that were in good serviceable condition. Mine were actually bad, they ohms checked bad. Turns out this guy right here, the body control module is bad on this car as far as the door de-safe issue I was having. It was another $350 for a used one, plus the actuator mechanisms were another $150. Just so this car will be able to lock its doors. The door opens now at least. So that's a plus. But the fuel pump 
did not come here in time because the one I ordered, this guy right here, AEM fuel pump, does not work because these all-wheel drive TT225s have a transfer pump built in to the fuel pump because it has a split fuel tank over the drive shaft. So I had to order a Dishworks fuel pump that will fit OEM with this transfer pump situation that's going on here. Not really a transfer pump, but it's just multiple hoses because it has to go to the other side of the fuel tank. So either way, I want it to be done correctly, and that means that's the status of the car. And I still was somehow going to try to film a car review on it, and I don't even know if that's going to be possible anymore. So I'm kind of panicking and super stressed out. So I'm going to end this video here, and hopefully the next one will go a little bit better. So I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye!